From LEX 18, your official UK sports station for Big Blue Nation, this is BBN Tonight. Presented by Central Bank, the official bank of UK athletics. Welcome to this Memorial Day edition of BBN Tonight. I'm Anna Tarullo. And I'm Eli Gaines. Tonight we're recapping the weekend for the Kentucky softball team. Kentucky basketball had move-in day over the weekend. And women's golfer Jensen Castle is set to compete in the U.S. Open. But we start tonight by saying thank you to all those servicemen and women who bravely gave their lives to ensure our freedoms. Kentucky athletics are sharing their gratitude. Mark Stoop said, thank you to the courageous men and women of our nation's military who sacrificed their lives in defense of our freedom and liberties. Brad White said, I'm a proud brother of a Marine, son of an Air Force officer, and grandson of two World War II veterans. The ultimate sacrifice the men and women of our armed forces are willing to make for our freedom is beyond humbling while insufficient in so many ways. Thank you. And Kentucky basketball says today we honor and salute the brave men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice to protect us in our freedoms today and every day. We say thank you. Yes, thank you. And while over the weekend, another historic season for Rachel Lawson and the UK softball team came to an end. That's tonight's Big Blue Story presented by Baptist Health. Kentucky had a must-win game on Saturday to keep the season alive against Alabama in the NCAA Super Regional. The Cats came up a little short, falling to the Crimson Tide in two straight games and missed out on a trip to the College World Series. It was the eighth Super Regional in school history, all coming under Rachel Lawson. Now, one Wildcat managed to Make history though, junior catcher Kayla Kowalik recorded her 100th hit of the season, joining an exclusive group of just eight SEC players to accomplish that feat. That's right, and the first ever at Kentucky now. It mm -hmm. wasn't flashy, but it was nah. a perfect bunt to reach base. <laughs> Kowalik finished the season with a 495 batting average. She led the SEC in triples and extra bases. Just a stellar season that will be pretty hard to duplicate. The better news, we get to see her again next season. Yes. Head coach Rachel Lawson shared her thoughts on Kowalik after the game. People talk about it, but she, she is very, very impressive. I, I still contend she's... You know, she's not the best leadoff batter in the country. She's certainly, there's not going to be one a lot better than her. She just completely dedicated herself. Plus, she's she's brilliant. She's she's incredibly bright. She knows the game. She knows the game both from a slapping perspective and a catching perspective. So, you know, I, I can't say enough about what an elite level player Kayla is. Well, Kentucky softball season may not have ended the way they wanted to, but they were one of the first sports to have the Big Blue Nation come back out and support them. Phenomenal. Right, and it has the sports audience growing. The fan support throughout these last couple of weeks has been stupendous. Just in Tuscaloosa alone, an overflowing crowd yes. gathering this weekend to watch these two teams compete. Now, this was happening in every Super Regional this weekend. These programs... Starting to get some recognition out there. That's right. I think it's so amazing. I remember growing up, if I wanted to see a softball game, me and my dad had to drive from Owensboro to Lexington to watch the games. There's hardly ever really any TV games unless it was World Series. But now, like, I know that little girls get to watch our games, like, in between travel ball games or just at the comfort of their home instead of having to drive hours to the nearest college softball stadium. And I just think that's really awesome. And I think it's great to see how far, like, our game has grown. And I think it's going to continue to get even bigger. Now, Anna, we saw just the support that they were able to get this season. Obviously mm -hmm. not the way that you wanted to end the year, but the support that the Wildcats got all season long was absolutely phenomenal. It was just another great season. For sure. Unfortunately, just falling a little bit short again. That's right. And it was moving day this weekend for some new Wildcats. Ty Ty Washington, Damian Collins, CJ Frederick, and Bryce Hopkins all mm -hmm. made themselves at home on campus this weekend and got to meet the Wildcat and everything. I'm uh -huh. jealous. I haven't met him yet. Severe <laughs> Wheeler, too, but Coach Cal said he forgot to get a pick. Kellen Grady will join the team in Lexington after this week. Freshman guard Ty Ty Washington was pretty impressed with his first real taste of the Big Blue Nation. I want them to have fun, enjoy, enjoy the, the experience, um, learn a lot, learn how to be a man off the court. Is the kid driving by waving at me? Uh, just random people out there? Yeah. What's that like for you? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's dope, I like that. I mean, I was just looking out, you know, first time out here, so looking at scenery and then they, I seen them drive and they came back, started waving, so I mean, that's, Real cool it shows the fans be all into it already. Eli, did your move in Daegu anything like that? Heck no. Mine, so I moved into Iowa State my freshman year, and moving into that dorm room was a complete <laughs> nightmare because yeah. I the route 
to carry all mm -hmm. of your stuff up there was insane. I right. had to go through like two different buildings. Oh, gosh. It was hot outside. What? It was brutal. So I didn't get the treatment like yeah. that. Also, I didn't even get to see the Cy, uh, yeah. the Cyclone, uh, the mascot when he I moved in. He wants a refund. So, yeah, ref that, that would be uh, incredible. Get me out of a little bit of debt. <laughs> all right, now don't forget, obviously, the Kentucky basketball camps are starting up this week. Limited spots still available, so sign up now if you have not. This year, there will be a father-son and father-daughter camps, multiple satellite camps, and a three-day Camp Cal. Things kick off with the satellite camps tomorrow and finish up with Camp Cal on June 28th. Participants will have the chance to learn from Calipari, Orlando, Antigua, Chin Coleman, and maybe even get a chance to meet a new Wildcat or two. To find a link to register for one of these camps, head to bbntonight.com. Kentucky track and field had 24 athletes qualify for the NCAA championships in Eugene, Oregon next week. 13 men and 11 women moved on for the NCAA East prelims and Tori Herman set a school record in the 1500 meter run at that meet. By far the coolest thing was the 4x4 race. Kentucky ran lights out. Watch this. Shut it down. They see you know. I still see people from other teams running. They're like, you they, they homies like, hey, let's go. Let's go. I'm like, oh, okay, back then. Like All the turn they came on. simply free what? I would I would, I would stop when the lights went out right there I was just like oh yeah. no I think mom they, I would stop yeah I'd they kept scared. going that is awesome maybe, that they were I wonder able if to I would be faster in the dark you know, maybe you if you're, you're not scared of the competition it. it's just you just running out there that was insane mm -hmm. and unbelievable that they were able <laughs> yeah. to stay focused like that cool stuff all right coming up next on BBN tonight our up-and-coming reporter Keith Farmer <laughs> is talking with Jensen Castle I've heard of him I think yeah. she's preparing to compete in the U.S. Open later this week we'll be right back <laughs> 